Hey guys, welcome to ETAPS 2016 Software Tutorials. In this tutorial, we will be dealing with the reinforced concrete slab design that is recently introduced in ETAPS 2016. Here, I have modeled a commercial building of 4 stories high. The building is having a frame structure consisting of beams, columns and slabs. Before getting into the design part, I would like to give a summary regarding the property and the load assignments conducted for this slab in this model. If you want to know more about the modeling part, you can visit our YouTube channel Civil Naho Tutorials and check out the beginners tutorial videos regarding the ETAPS modeling. The first step for slab design in ETAPS is to define the material properties. So if you just go to define and select the material properties, you can see that for the concrete grade, I have assigned a grade of M30 for the slab. You can see the properties of M30 over here. And for the rebar, I have defined a steel grade of FE500, that is HYSD500. And these are the properties of FE500 steel. And after defining the material properties, next step is to define the section. So go to section properties and select the slab sections. And here I have defined a slab thickness of 125mm, which is being given a name of S125. And if you can just check the modify or show property to see more, you can see that for the 125mm thick slab, I have given a property name of S125 and I have assigned a slab material of M30 from the drop down. And here under the modeling type, I have defined my slab as a shell thin. And under the property data, I have selected the type as a slab from the drop down and have provided the thickness of the slab in mm, that is 125 mm. So the one thing that you have to make sure is that you have to set your units as you intend to. So here I am going with the metric SI defaults and if you just want to change it, you can just select the show units form. So here I am going to express my units in mm and when it comes to the design, the moment and the force is being expressed in kilonewton meter and kilonewton and the displacement also in mm and the rebar area is going to be expressed as in mm square per meter. So these are the things that you have to check first before when you go for design. The next step is to assign the loads on the slab and in this tutorial, I am only going to consider the gravity loads that is the dead load and the live load and also the sulfate of the slab. The sulfate of the slab is being automatically computed by the ETAP software itself. So what we have to do is we have to assign the superimposed dead load and the live load. So you can define or assign the loads by selecting the shell loads from the assign and select the uniform. And you can define the load over here for dead load and also for the live load. But here if you can just go to the plan, I'm going to select the F3, that is the third floor. And if we select the display, load assigns and the shell, you can see that I have given a superimposed jet load of 1.5 kN per meter square. And for the live load, I have given a load of 4 kN per meter square as it is a commercial building or an education building. So after assigning the loads, the next step is to design the slab. In ETAPS, you can design the slab in two methods. The first one is a strip method and the second one is the FEM method. First, we shall start with the strip area method. In strip area method, a slab area is being divided into three different strips which is comprising of two column strips and a single middle strip. As you can see in this figure, this single slab area is being divided into two column strips that is being colored in gray which is having a width of L minimum divided by 4 where L minimum is the length of the shorter span of the slab that is being considered and the remaining area at the middle is known as the middle strip. So in similar manner, we also define the strips for the same slab area along the opposite direction. So in short, we are going to divide the slab into different strip area along both X and Y axis. The next step is to define the design strips in the strip area method. There are two ways in which we can assign the design strips on the slab area. The first one is drawing the design strips manually 
and the other one is assigning the design strips on the slab area by using the add design strip option in eTabs. First, let me start with the manual assignment of strips. So let us go to plan and select the floor where we want to design our slab. So here I'm going to the third floor slab and I'm going to design this two sets of slab actually. So first to assign the strips manually, go to the option draw and here select draw design strips. So here I'm going to define the strip layer A and the strip design type I'm going to assign is a column strip. Since I have selected a slab that is having a dimension of 5 into 6 meter, the shorter span is 5 meter, so the width of the column strip will be 1250 mm. So here to provide that width, I'm going to provide 0 mm over start with left and 1250 over here. And here I have finished assigning the width of the column strip of strip layer A. And let's now draw it manually. So I'm going to draw the strip from this column to this column. And let us draw the column strip at the other end. So here to draw that I just interchange the values over here. And after assigning the values, let's draw the strip from this column N to this column. And next I'm going to assign a strip design at of middle strip. So let's select the middle strip from the drop down. And the width of the middle strip is 2500 mm. So here I'm going to provide a value at start with right as 1250 because I'm going to divide the strip at the middle and provide the same value over here. So I'm going to draw from this midpoint to this midpoint that is the midpoint of the two slabs. And next is I have to define the strip layer B. So here there is a shortcut over here. So you don't have to go here and just select it. You can just select the shortcut of draw design strips. So I'm going to assign the same values for strip layer B also. So just select the strip layer B. And in strip design type, let's select the column strip. And provide the same column strip width that we provided along the strip layer A. So here I'm going to provide zero. It's 1250 again and I'll change this value to 0 again. So I will just draw the column strip along the strip layer B from this column to this column. And also from here to here also. And next we need to draw the column strip at the other end of the slab. So here I will interchange the values. And I will draw it from here. And also over here. So now we have finished assigning the column strips along the strip layer B. And next is we need to assign the middle strip. So we'll select the middle strip from here. And the width of the middle strip is 3750 mm. So we're going to divide it at the middle. So the value will be 1750. So I'm going to provide the value 1750 in both left and right at the starting point and also at the end point.
So just provide the uh, middle strip at the midpoint of the slab. So now we have done with assigning the column and the middle strip along the both strip layer A and B. And now let's view how the strips has been assigned by going to the view option. So let's go to the view and select the set display options. And here under other assignments, let's select the show width and click on OK. So here you can see the strips that has been defined in the both direction that is the strip layer A and the strip layer B. If you just want to see the strip layer A and B individually, let's go to the view options and just select the strip layer A for right now and click on apply and OK. So this is the strip layer that the both the column and the middle strip that has been assigned along the strip layer A. And if you just uncheck the strip layer A and select the strip layer B, here you can see on the both slabs the column strip and the middle strip that has been assigned along the strip layer B. In similar manner, you can also design the rest of the slabs over here. And if you're opting for this method, assigning the design strips in both layers A and B is time consuming. So it's better to opt for the second option that is add design strips option in A tabs, where A tabs will be assigning the design strips along both A and B layers on each slab automatically. So I'll be explaining that in the second part of this tutorial and the rest of the slab analysis. If you find this part of the tutorial useful, please do like, share and comment. And please do subscribe to our channel by clicking on this logo over here for the upcoming tutorials. And if you want to continue to the second part of a tutorial, please click here.